Uh, so, like, f from the fighters, it sounds like they don't know what's going on. Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights. Challenge your friends. Level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. All right, Zach. Um, man, this uh, this last pay per view. I just wanted to get your thoughts on some of the things that happened. Actually, just one thing that happened. Uh, it was the main event. You know, everybody saw the fight. It was very close. You know, people are shouting now for an immediate rematch. Was Sean Strickland robbed in your eyes? He wasn't robbed. Uh, I did give him the win, but he he wasn't robbed. And, and one thing people don't realize. You know, everyone's talking about scoring criteria now. It keeps coming up, scoring criteria, scoring criteria. The judges don't get to see any of the numbers. We, we see the head strike. Like, during the fight, a little thing pops up. We see head strikes. We saw – the judges don't see any of that. They're just sitting cage side seeing the fight. And I could see how they scored it for uh, Dracus. You know, Sean was going – like, stumbling backwards a lot, kind of stumbling around, got taken down, even though he didn't control it all, like, when you're a judge on the side of the cage and this there's like a fight or a round that nothing happened and you're just like, oh, who won that? I guess the guy that got the takedown. Like I do I scored it for Sean, watching it on my couch, seeing all the numbers. And also I, I like Sean, he's a friend of mine. But um uh I it wasn't a robbery, you know. That's that's just what it is. Yeah, they say optics, right? Like what it looks like, not what it actually is. Yeah, Maybe that's when, and I just had to deal with that in my last fight. The, the optics make a difference. The judges aren't seeing who's actually landing significant fights. They're going off of just their, their perception sitting cage side. Yeah, I don't know how you're going to fix that, man, because there's so much money involved for the fighters that, yeah. you know, if they got a flat fee, then it'd be a different situation, I think. I think, you know, we would focus on the judging, but it wouldn't be that – I don't think it would be that serious because the fighters, man, they don't win. They don't get half the paycheck. And it's a championship fight. It's like yeah. crazy money. The half paycheck's crazy. And then like Sean and Drake, because neither of them are worried about getting, getting cut, right? But if you're in a situation like me, right, I'm coming off of a loss. I'm unranked. I can't have a bad decision costing my job coming up. You know, it's like, it's a big deal. I don't, PFL has like an AI judge. They don't use it, but they show its score. I like I don't think that's the way to go either, but someone's got to do something. Yeah, yeah, I definitely don't think an AI judge is something yeah. that you want to look at to, yeah. to score fights. But uh, it is what it is, right? Um, man, you're you're back in action February 10th. Bogdan Gustkov, you know, what are your thoughts on him and, and the fighting style? You know, he he came in with a lot of hype. I'm I'm super excited for the fight. Um, his UFC debut was against a top ten opponent. You know, and he got finished, and he he's kind of trying to bounce back, and I feel like the UFC kind of wants him to bounce back, but I think it's a great fight. You know, he didn't have a lot of hard fights on the regional scene, and on his in his region, right in Uzbekistan, like he hasn't been tested, and then the first time he got tested, he got choked out by by Vulcan. So I think it's a good matchup. I think it's a great matchup for me, and I'm I'm excited to get in there and show, you know, what I've been working on and get the ufc and the fans excited to see me compete um you bring up something interesting about like hype you know what i mean like it seems like certain fighters from certain countries you know even though like the the broad audience doesn't know them as well but they kind of get a push because they're from a certain country or they might have a fan base that we're not familiar with i don't know it's just like you know you compare it to american fighters you know what I mean, it's just a different situation. Do you see that in, oh. in in MMA, just overall? Absolutely. It's And it's just business. I'm not mad at the UFC about it. It's just business, right? Signing an American fighter like maybe Bo Nickel drew some eyes, but probably not very many, right? Most American wrestling fans were probably already fans of the UFC. This guy, Bogdan Guskov from Uzbekistan, I've got – I'm getting hundreds of hate messages a day from, from random – Uzbekistan people, and these are all people that are going to buy this pay per view or, or going to tune in, right? It's not a pay per view; they're going to tune in, right? That would a whole country of people that would never watch the UFC 
if it wasn't for this dude. And it's just it's just good business for the UFC to, to push these guys um, that are bringing in eyes from other places. And it also brings in eyes for you as well, fighting a guy like this, right? Yeah, exactly. And I, I, that's why I'm excited. I, I jumped at the chance, you know, like I said, his debut was against a top 10 guy and they were talking, I think it was like almost even odds. They were talking like he was supposed to, could have won. And so when I go in there and beat him, you know, it's just going to roll me forward. For sure. Then you can fight uh, Vulcan. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> He's a I mean, I'll fight him. Yeah. We don't we don't train together. He is a friend of mine though. I've I we've yeah. trained together in the past in, yeah. in Thailand. Super nice but, guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah super he is. nice guy. Um uh last June, man, that's the last time you fought Modeskis Pukaskis. You know, the judges gave him the unanimous decision. You know, what can you say about that performance? Because it seemed like there was a little bit of controversy at the end about the result. You know, like I said, it's I thought I won the fight. I've watched it a million times. I still still think I won the fight, right? I outstruck him. I, I knocked him down more times. I took him down more times. But, you know, at the end of the day, the three people, it was unanimous. All three judges thought he won. So, and the way I fought, like, the level of my ability that I showed in that cage, I didn't deserve to win. So, at the end of the day, you know, hats off to Modestus. Um I've just got to get back in there and, and show who, who I really am and get it done. You know, I can't, I've been fortunate in my career. I've been lucky that I've never had a bad decision. Like I've, I've gone to this decision a few times. I've never had one. And now I really understand what they say when they, what they mean when they say, don't let it go to the judges. Like I get it now because those people don't even know what they're watching. Yeah. It's gotta be the worst feeling as a competitor to believe that you won but you lost on in the books. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, I couldn't. So when they read 30, 27, when they read unanimous decision, when one judge was 30, 27, I put my hand up. I was like, Oh yeah, I, I clearly won at least one round. So this is my fight. And then they read his name and I felt like such an asshole on TV, raising my hand when the other guy won, like, and then like, like we talked earlier, getting half my paycheck dealing with a loss like it was it was rough yeah man um a lot of people don't understand that man that's to me that's the the worst feeling i guess is just like you believe in your mind but then i guess you got to turn that into a positive and get in back into training camp for your next fight and use that as fuel i believe 100 percent. so it's just my like there was points in that fight where i kind of just survived i kind of just hung on right and now it's just about making no doubt this fight, February 10th, there will be no doubt at the end of it who the winner is. Last year, you went one and one. Um, you know, the development, you know, in, in your mixed martial arts career, like the development in your skills, how do you feel about it from last year? So uh, my I've developed greatly, <clears throat> especially coming off of that Modestus fight, right? When I beat Jordan Wright, I kind of felt like I understood the game, had it in the bag, right? I was just going to clinch these guys up against the cage. And it was harder to do that against Modestus than it was Jordan. So I definitely, my development of just being patient and mixing my tools. Like I used, people used to think I was a grappler. And ever since I got into the UFC, it's kind, I've kind of not grappled at all. So I really just want to get back to my roots and, and mixing my tools. Definitely. And, uh, you know, uh, training with uh, the Gorilla Gang, you know, I've, I've actually talked to Devin Clark <clears throat> about this. And, uh, yeah, just having so many big dudes, you know what I mean? It's, it's very rare to have that situation you have in Denver. Yeah, absolutely. And it's I'm super fortunate that it's my backyard, right? This is where I grew up. I get to stay at home with my family when I train. But <clears throat> we're the best big guy room in the world. Like, I'm not saying each one, any one of us is, is the best individual fighter. But, we're, like, I don't think there's anywhere else you can go where you've got five guys, five heavyweights from the top organizations in the world that train together every single day. Yeah, you don't. You don't have that. I, I don't yeah. think I've ever been to any gym that has more than like two or three heavyweights. You know yeah. what I mean? They're probably not even training with each other. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Usually you have one or someone will come in for camp or he'll bring yeah. guys with him just to use the coaches. Like yeah. there's no, there's nowhere else in the world on, on planet Earth 
that you can just walk in and get get a true shark tank, five different rounds from five different fighters that are either in the UFC one or, or PFL. Definitely. And, and how is this, this camp going? I, you know, I see that you're training with Devin and everybody else as well, but Devin is actually fighting on the same night as you are. And there's got to be something to that. You know, I talked to him about it and you guys are kind of like closer. So you guys get to feed off each other and, and, and you guys are true veterans. He's a little bit more veteran than you are, but you know, it helps. Yeah. It's, it's been amazing. This camp, this has been the best camp I've ever had. Just having someone like every, all the fighters know what you're going through. We've all done camps. We've all done weight cuts. They know what you're going through, but having someone that's actually going through it with you, because we're same weight class. We're eating the same amount of calories every single day, doing the same workouts. He like, when I'm feeling it, I know he's feeling it. And if I see him pushing through, then what, what am I going to complain about? What am I going to whine about? If Devin's doing it, I got to do it. He, he told me you're the most professional fighter he's ever met. Oh, well, that's, that's good to know. That's good to Yeah, know. that's a huge compliment, man. Like, yeah. professional as in, like, everything's in line, you know what I mean? Because, you you know, you've also played other professional sports. So it's like you kind of bring that into it as well. Yeah, absolutely. That That's what it, that's what I have. That, that's my, my base, right? My background is being a professional athlete. And I just know – I know how to take care of myself and to prepare myself to perform. And it's, I know if I give myself any leeway that that's how you get off track and that's when things go bad. Definitely. And you know, what do you envision for yourself? What kind of performance are you expecting out of yourself in this fight coming up? So I'm, I'm looking for a, a, a finish. It's not a like go out there and scrape one by or go out there and hold him down. I'm going to finish him and I'm going to have these judges not be involved. I'm going to set myself up for the rest of the year. Uh, I, I feel like I kind of didn't really show myself in the, in the cage last year. And when I leave, when I get out of the octagon, I want the UFC and the fans saying, when, when is that guy going to fight again? We, we need to see it. You saw the head left. Now they got drug free sports. And you, did you deal with them? Drugs free, drug free sports international when you played football? Yeah, I, I, I dealt with them in the NFL. It wasn't um, 24-7 testing. It wasn't anything like it is with the UFC, but I peed in a cup for them with the, in the NFL. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, did, have you been tested already this year? I have not. They came and got Devin. They came and got Devin okay. the other day, but um, they, they have not it's tested. It's kind of odd that they got, they got Devin, but they didn't get you at the same. You might as well just do it together. Well, right? that's what I said when he walked in. I was like, are you here to test me? And he was like, no, I'm here for Devin. I was like, well, do you just want to grab mine? <laughs> so you're not coming and bothering me some other time. And he's like, Nope. I'll little, it's ran, It's random. Like it's random. I'm like, all right, sure. Man. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, it was random right there when you walked in. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Absolutely. Like, yeah. <laughs> you didn't know. It's uh, it's pretty crazy, but uh, it's, it's, I hope it's easier for you guys. You know what I mean? Cause you know, you always heard all the horror stories from certain fighters, especially during fight week. And that's I don't understand what was what was up with that, but uh, but yeah, hopefully DFSI takes care of you guys and 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 doesn't you know tarnish people's names because you saw it seem like they did that to a few guys. Yeah, yeah, it's I do hope it's for the better, and there's I I think taking it in house it can only get better, and I I mean I know. The testing is still done out of house, but the UFC is kind of overseeing all of it. I feel like it's going to get better, at least from the fighter's perspective, right? And that's, at the end of the day, what matters is, to me at least, is is how easy it is for me and how little it affects my life. Yeah, yeah. that's. I think that's number one. It's, it's, if it benefits the fighters, we should push for it. Um, Bellator and PFL, they merge, right? And, uh, and you got teammates that fight for PFL. Do you? Do you have any teammates that fight for Bellator as well? Uh, yeah, I do. Have, we, we have a few okay. guys in, in Bellator. Okay. So you got a few guys and they're merging. And, and, you know, what do you see from them? You know, you're the kind of like the spectator. You're the UFC. So you get to see like how they're reacting to all the news and stuff like that. You know, what, what do you see? Uh, so like fr from the fighters, it sounds like they don't know what's going on. It like at first they thought they were going to be one company. And then now they're going to be two company or they're going to be two companies under one. 
but now they're the first card is them fighting each other. So they still don't know what's, what's going on. Uh, from, from my perspective, like the more competition for the UFC, the better. I love fighting in the UFC. I want to fight in the UFC for my whole career, but the more competition for the UFC, it's just the, it's just better for everyone. It's better for the fans. It's better for the fighters. So I hope, I hope they figure it out. And I hope it's, it's awesome. Like I kind of like this champions versus champion thing that they, that they're doing. And, uh, I hope it works out for them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's the competition. That's the most important thing. Like free agency has like become a thing in, in, in MMA in the recent years. Right. So if, if there's less promotions, I don't know, man, is there going to be better free agency? I have, I have no idea what time will tell, I guess. Well, yeah, hopefully, hopefully it just means that this PFL bell tour combination can pay guys like, Cause that's where PFL started stealing guys is when they were offering big checks to these, you know, 10 to 15 ranked guys that were coming up in the end of their contract. PFL was offering them big checks. So they jumped ship. That's, that's the really, that's going to be the difference. If, if they can offer money to fighters, that's makes it worth not being able to call yourself a UFC fighter. That's when we're going to start seeing the UFC have to step up their game as far as payment goes. Yes. Hopefully that day comes real, real soon. February 10th, man, that's coming real soon as well. UFC Fight Night in Las Vegas. Hopefully they get you out of Las Vegas in the next fight coming up this year. Thank you, Zach, for the time yeah. and all the best in the fight coming up, man. It's always good to chat with you, man. I like the – you have great insight because, you, like you said, professional athlete in different you know, yeah. uh, sports as well. So you get a good perspective. Yeah, thank you, man. And that is my goal. My goal for 2024 is to fight on a damn pay-per-view. I'm tired of fighting in the, the freaking apex. 